Correspondent Tim Marshall, who's the only British television journalist in Pristina, now reports from inside Kosovo. God help us, we must stay in Kosovo. The Serb population fears revenge, fears they will soon be the refugees. The Archbishop of Pristina urged them to stay and stay calm. He said if they leave, it will be a tragedy of historical proportions. There's a bitter debate going on. Stay, leave, what's happening? We can't show you everything we've seen, but there's the small beginnings of an army pullout. The belongings and furniture of some officers' families are being loaded into trucks ready to head north. The KLA, or UCK, backed by NATO, has become a nightmare for Serbia. The fear is the KLA will seek revenge for the nightmare visited on so many ethnic Albanians in this smashed city. This 72-year-old ethnic Albanian told us he'd seen two wars, but never anything like this one. He's been living in a cellar for survival and in fear for months. Others told us that the people who wrecked this particular family flat wore uniforms and balaclavas. Pristina lies on a historical, geographical, and ethnic fault line. When the earthquake erupted, poison rose to the surface. A child's room burnt, and a family's life torn apart. And this, the corridor leading to the main room where the family ate their dinner. The pictures can only hint at the orgy of destruction and violence which took place here in the first few weeks of the war. Smashed crockery, smashed lives. And the pictures beg the question, when the Kosovan Albanians come back in their hundreds of thousands, can the two communities ever live together again? Tim Marshall, Sky News, Pristina. Well, maybe. <laughs> if Kosovo is to heal from the wounds of this bloody conflict, it'll be through its children. For now, they sit in the baking dust of northern Albania, waiting to go home. A home some have never seen, a home some have already forgotten. Many of these children have witnessed horrors their elders couldn't even imagine. Yet, with the kind of resilience only found in children, there is optimism here. The pictures these children draw still reflect their recent memories of home. This boy shows his house being attacked by a tank, but they're looking forward to going back to Kosovo. I wish I could go back to my house and to kiss the dust of my homeland. I was born there and I want to die there. I want to go back to my fatherland. All my friends and brothers are there. I want Kosovo to be a free place when I won't be afraid of the Serbs. I don't want to see again the Serbs beating our teachers in front of us. I want to go back to Kosovo as soon as possible. I don't want to stay in this place. The hopes of these people have been raised and dashed so many times before, they hardly dare believe this latest peace process is finally coming to fruition. These children want to go home, indeed they're desperate to go home, and Kosovo is tantalizingly close. That's why their parents refuse to move them away from the border area to safer camps in southern Albania. Ross Appleyard, Sky News, on the Kosovo-Albanian border. Ein Dorf irgendwo im Südosten des Kosovo. Flüchtlinge werden von serbischen Heckenschützen in einen Hinterhalt gelockt. Wenig später, ein Bundeswehrverband kommt zur Hilfe. Seine Aufgabe, die Milizen entwaffnen und die Rückkehr der Flüchtlinge gemäß Friedensvertrag zu garantieren. Ein Szenario von vielen, das die Bundeswehr in Munster durchgespielt hat. Vier Wochen lang bekamen die Soldaten eine Spezialausbildung, in der es um Geiselnahmen, Hinterhalt und versteckte Sprengladungen ging. Denn der kommende Einsatz wird der bisher gefährlichste, auch wenn die Bundeswehrführung heute zu beruhigen versuchte. Es ist ein Einsatz von Bodentruppen. Der Einsatz von Bodentruppen ist abhängig von dem Auftrag. Wir haben den Auftrag, eine Verhandlungslösung umzusetzen. Wir reden nicht über den Einsatz, wie in manche meinen, kämpfend in den Kosovo hineinzugehen. Das ist nicht Teil des Auftrags. Um maximale Sicherheit zu gewähren, hat die Bundeswehr nochmal draufgelegt. In Munster kam auf jeden Soldaten ein Ausbilder. Darüber hinaus wird in den Einsatz schweres Gerät mitgenommen, zum Beispiel der Minenräumpanzer Keiler, der Straßen und Wege frei hält. Aber bei aller Vorsorge, die Soldaten verabschieden sich mit gemischten Gefühlen. Weil man muss mit der Frau reden, 
wie sie sich, was sie fühlt, wie sie denkt, wo ihre Ängste sind. Natürlich, die habe ich auch. Ja. Was auf sie zukommen könnte, wenn wir erstmal runterfliegen, äh, was uns dort erwartet und wie man, man weiß ja nie, wie es dann endet, wie man dann eventuell auch wieder zurückkommt. Als anderer Mensch oder wenn es dann daneben geht, vielleicht auch gar nicht mehr. In zwei Wochen wird es ernst, dann werden die ersten Soldaten aus Brandenburg nach Mazedonien verlegt. Riz, there's no official word uh, from here at the uh, Kamano uh, NATO base. Uh, the meeting still goes on uh, uh, behind me in the, the tent where the Serb delegation returned uh, not too long ago. The, the meeting uh, was called after uh, NATO announced a break when the Serb delegation decided it was going to drive back to Belgrade for more political consultations. It, it was the political questions that caused the many delays in all of this, there were in all three trips back across the border into Serbia by the... We're just now being told, Riz, uh, by sources that the agreement, the military assistance agreement has been signed. Uh, the meeting had been going on for now only about an hour and 20 minutes or so. So after the uh, Serbian delegation notified Colonel Jackson, who was just about to leave this NATO base, uh, when NATO announced a break in the talks, the Serbian delegation wanted to come back and resume the talks. It's been an hour and 20 minutes since that meeting resumed, but now we are getting uh, word uh, that the agreement, in fact, has been signed. The military assistance agreement, as you know, the many complicated and uh, political questions uh, were uh, tackled during the past 24 hours, not the least of which was the KLA. There's a problem of uh, the Serbian troop withdrawal and the threat from the KLA to their rear guard. Lou, let me get a question here then, if you're, if you're able to answer this. What does NATO do now? It has right, to I'm getting some interruptions from another network, uh, but uh, uh, the fact of the matter is the military assistance agreement has been signed. We have not yet had access to that document. Uh, we were assured uh, in the early hours of the first talks that as soon as it was signed, we would have uh, access to the finer points uh, of what we can expect to happen now. But uh, for now, Riz, the agreement has been signed. We expect uh, developments to... Uh, I uh, happen rather quickly here and we'll get back to you. Luke, can I ask you, from what you saw in terms of activity there, was there any signs that NATO was geared up to, to verify Serb troop withdrawal and to start uh, their suspension of the bombing? I think we've lost our connection there with Lou Waters. He's there at the Kumano uh, yeah, base in Macedonia. CNN domestic in my ear with breaking... Well, let's get across to John King, who's at the White House. He's the correspondent there. He can give us some perspective on how this news, uh, news is being received in the United States. What John, what's him? being said? Hello, Riz. Three senior U.S. officials now telling CNN the deal is signed. They got notice from the talks along the Kosovo-Macedonia border just after 3 o'clock local time here in Washington. U.S. officials greeting this as, of course, a very welcome and positive development, but we're told the initial response from the White House will be relatively low-key. We're looking for a paper statement from the president praising this, but also making clear that the airstrikes, the NATO airstrikes, will continue until they see the withdrawal actually begin. But if that withdrawal begins, and if it sticks to the set timetable in this technical agreement just signed, we're also told to expect the NATO airstrikes to be called off, suspended will be the official term, relatively quickly. Then, of course, the United Nations Security Council could go ahead with its vote, implementing the peace plan, and we're told then to watch for watch Brussels for the NATO Secretary General Javier Solana to announce that the North Atlantic Alliance has authorized the first NATO peacekeepers to cross into Kosovo. If all goes well, we're told those first Serb troops could be pulling out within the next 24 hours, certainly even less than that NATO hopes, and that by this time tomorrow, the first NATO peacekeepers would have crossed into Kosovo. Riz? Now, of course, John... Is, uh, Brian, how quickly do you think we're going to see a Serb withdrawal from Kosovo? Well, we're, we're, one of the things that apparently is... I, I was told is, is part of this uh, change which makes the deal possible uh, tonight is that it will all happen very, very quickly. Uh, that uh, Serbs will withdraw. I think that is General Jackson. Is it yes, let's hear what General Jackson is coming out. First time he's say. made a statement, I think, on this. The man who is in charge of the NATO contingent ready to go into Kosovo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Um, 
You've been there a very long time, and I've been here quite a long time. However, I have some very good news. Uh, last night, the meeting between the NATO and Yugoslav delegations reconvened. Uh, once again, on behalf of NATO, I presented to General Marjanovic the military technical agreement, revised in the light of the draft United Nations Security Council resolution approved by the G8. It has not been easy going, not least because there has inevitably been a political as well as a military dimension to achieving success. The international community set out certain conditions for peace to be met as reflected in that draft approved uh, by the G8. Uh, this military technical agreement explains how the Yugoslav forces are to achieve military compliance with these conditions. It details how the army, the interior police, and all other forces should conduct a phased, verifiable, and orderly withdrawal uh, from Kosovo. It also provides a clear legal basis for the deployment of the International Security Force, known as the Kosovo Force, or K4, as it inevitably will become. Its purpose, of course, being to establish a secure environment in Kosovo. Verifiable compliance with this agreement will establish the conditions for the suspension of the air campaign. I can confirm that General Mijanovic and General Stefanovic have signed the agreement on behalf of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and that I have signed on behalf of NATO. Under the terms of the agreement, once it has been confirmed to the Secretary General of NATO that the Yugoslav forces have complied with the initial withdrawal required of its forces from Kosovo, that he will direct the suspension of the airstrikes. I have made it clear that if subsequ subsequently the withdrawal timetable is breached, the agreement requires the air operation to resume. It is tragic that intransigence has made it necessary for the international community to resort to airstrikes in order to reach a settlement. However, uh, NATO's resolve in conducting a sustained air campaign has finally achieved this agreement and now is the time to look ahead. The fact that this docu document has now been agreed represents the hope of a better future in which we can rebuild Kosovo and restore some normality to the lives of its ordinary citizens regardless of their ethnic background. Very soon I shall deploy K4 into Kosovo to even-handedly implement this agreement. It will establish a robust military presence that will provide a secure environment for the safe return of the refugees, both inside and outside Kosovo, to their homes. This will not be an easy operation, and it will take time. I fully understand the wishes of the refugees to return home quickly, and I promise that K4 will do its utmost to ensure that this is done as soon and as safely as possible. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I want to say, and not now is not the time for questions. Thank you very much indeed. So, the moment we've been waiting, what, four days for since these talks started, finally General Jackson has come out to say that an agreement has been reached. Of Yugoslavia. Vodila je razgovore sa uh, timom 
iz predstavnice Mojednjeg nacija, odnosno međunarodnih organizacija, odnosno snaga za međunarodnu bezbednost. Had long negotiations with the representatives of the international forces, international organizations and the diocese of the United Nations. Razgovori su bili teški, ali smo uspeli da na kraju potpišemo sporazum. The negotiations were very difficult, but finally we managed to sign the agreement. Sporazum o miru. The agreement on peace. Što znači da je rat prestao. It means that the war ended. Također to znači da je pobedila politika mira. It also means that the policy of peace prevailed. Politika mira koju vodi Savjena Republika Jugoslavija i predsjednik Milošević. The policy of peace which is conducted by the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and President Milošević. Mi smo u ovim razgovorima pokazali da smo bili za mir, ostali smo i također ćemo učiniti sve da na ovim prostorima zavlada potpun mir i bezbednost svih koji žive na Kosovo i Metohiji. Well, during these negotiations we showed that we are really for, for peace. We stayed all this long time and we would like to provide full safety in the area for all the citizens of Kosovo and Metohija. Snage bezbednosti će biti pod pokraviteljstvom Ujedinjenih nacija. The inter international security forces would be under the auspices of the United Nations. Sa preuzetom obavezom da obezbedem potpun mir na prostoru with the undertaken obligation to provide full peace within the area. Thank you very much. There is no time for questions. It's not time for them. So there we heard from the other side, the Serb side. The general there saying that negotiations had been very difficult, but finally they had managed to sign. These talks have been on, off over the past four days, and they must have talked in total for many, many hours, perhaps something like 20 or 30. Um, the, the, the general, the Yugoslav general, made it very clear this means the war is ended. A policy of peace will prevail after some, what, 70 days since the air campaign started. And he went on to say, international security forces under the auspices of the United Nations will now be in control in Kosovo. And that's uh, interesting that, of course, uh, they were very keen, the Serbs, not to hand over to NATO forces. As they see it, they're handing over to UN forces. And just remember... There are, there are uh, several collection points for the uh, Serbian troops uh, that will now uh, be uh, part of this military regimen. They will have to collect at these points and leave through four exit points getting back into Kosovo. We do not know the exact number of days it will uh, uh, be allowed to take uh, to affect that, but uh, we're waiting for uh, those finer points and we'll pass that along to you as soon as we get a hold of the document, Natalie. All right, Lou Waters at Kumanovo, Macedonia, where this uh, technical agreement has just been signed by military leaders. Let's find out how this transpired, how this agreement was uh, decided on tonight there in Macedonia. Uh, Wolf Blitzer with more on that. He's at the White House. Wolf. Natalie, President Clinton just a few minutes ago told reporters he's very pleased by word that this military technical agreement has now been signed. It's only the first of five steps, though, that have to be very carefully coordinated, sequenced in the next several hours, the next 24 to 48 hours. This is how this process is now going to unfold with the signing of the so-called military technical agreement. With daylight, presumably, the uh, Yugoslav forces would begin their withdrawal from Kosovo. This would be verified by various uh, means, U.S. and NATO uh, warplanes, uh, reconnaissance photography, making sure that the withdrawal has begun. Once they are convinced that the withdrawal is in fact serious, that it has begun, the uh, North Atlantic Council, the political arm of NATO, will convene. They will then decide to suspend the NATO airstrikes. That's